Hey, it's Cody. I'm on here to look at some decks that I think would make reasonable pairings with the Somnia Tarot. Um, if you have seen, uh, I think it's a video about uh, low-income witchcraft, and I had mentioned that there are uh, indie decks that I want, and that I, I, I mentioned specifically the Somnia Tarot, um, that I have been trying to save money for, and then the money keeps getting spent somehow, um, and so I just keep not getting it, um, but my husband and kids did get me this, um, for Mother's Day, so I'm super excited about that, um, this is new to me, it just came the other day, um, but I'm not gonna be, like, flipping through it, really, it's not gonna be, like, a walkthrough or any shit like that, I, or a review. Um, I just wanted to look at some decks that I plan on uh, pairing with it some. Um, so I believe this deck is 65 US dollars. Um, and I believe there's shipping on top of that, so I'm not 100% sure if that was correct. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link to um, where you can get this deck. Um, and any of the other uh, independent decks, um, down in the description box. Uh, the other ones, I'll tell you if they're mass market. And those ones, um, you can just, I don't know, get on the publisher's website or something. Okay. Get this crap out of here. I love this deck. I'm so excited to have this to work with. This is, it's just such a weird feeling. I don't know. Super weird feeling. Okay, so I have uh, what do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven decks, um, that I want to try pairing with it. And, okay, so I have three kind of categories of decks. I have, the first one's going to be ones that make sense. Those are just decks that I feel uh, have a, a similar sort of, uh, aesthetic sort of to them. Um, a couple that are going to be, uh, Okay, I'll we'll, we'll try them out. Um, and then I have a couple blasphemous deck pairings I want to try too. So let me zoom in here a little bit. All right, so here's our Somnia. And the first deck here that I think is just one that makes sense is the Endless Oracle. This is by Eric Mail. This is an independently uh, produced deck. <gasps> Fuck. I always forget why I don't use this cloth and then I remember um, when it's too late and I'm using it and the reason is the goddamn lace. Everything catches in it. Okay, so I feel like these two decks have similar color palettes. Even if the style is not necessarily similar, right? This is this is hand-drawn artwork, whereas the Somnia Tarot is photography. And I believe some Photoshop for, like, floating coins and shit. But I feel like this gives a nice, uh, another just layer to these cards. Like, the Eight of Coins sitting here, right? He's He's working away on his little craft. But the lightning striking makes me think... That he suddenly had such a super good idea. Um, but this is going to work because he has hi, he has the practice, the ability to follow through on something. Some new idea that struck him. Right? The Ace of Wands and the Revelry. I, I feel like these have something to say to one another, you know? Or to say about one. Okay, look at this. Oh my god, the Ace of Cups in the well and it's a fucking well. Both these cards are fucking well. <laughs> okay so I think this is a really good pairing um the figure by the fire is the three of swords look at the postures of both of them I swear to you I did not like stack these decks to have any similarities but they are temperance on the witches like it's just I think this is gonna work out so well and I feel like this is one of those pairings that just makes sense. Uh, when I got this Omnia Tarot in my hot little hands, it occurred to me that I hadn't really even thought about um, what I was going to pair it with. And the Endless Oracle uh, was the first one that I thought of. Okay, the next one here, this is the Nocturna Oracle. Um, this is also indie. I'll put a link to it if it's available right now. I'm not sure if it is. Um, 
yeah, but if it is, I will put it down there. So this is an Oracle deck by the same creator as, uh, I believe it's called the Anima Mundi deck. Uh, it's a tarot deck. So these, again, have very similar overall feelings to me. Knight of Wands and Fireflies. Again, these are, I don't know if they're paintings or what exactly. This is photography and, yeah, Photoshop. I mean, coins aren't going to just do that for you, so. This, uh, the Nocturna Oracle, I will admit, pisses me off a little bit because I wish there had been some sort of keyword on them. Like, I don't always know what this shape, okay, well, the Clownfish and the Anemone and Lovers, right? These two have, like, a relationship where one... They both benefit each other. Maybe the shark. Um, but some of these I just am not exactly sure what they mean. Um, and so it leaves me reliant on the guidebook, which is not always my favorite thing. I just, I wish there were keywords, man. Okay. But I do feel, you know, if I'm in a guidebook kind of mood, that these would pair pretty nicely. Some of these cards even have similar coloring here. The Emperor and the Cactus. Like, when I see a cactus and what I think of, I, I feel like it isn't necessarily um, what it says in the guidebook, but we'll move on from that. But again, this is another one that I feel like just makes sense. throwing my stuff. Uh, the last one that I feel like just makes sense is the Magic of You Oracle. Um, this is because I'm annoying and I... <laughs> some decks are just feel very... I don't know. I feel like this deck... Sorry, it's so freaking shiny. It goes really well with most of the tarot decks that I have. Like these are almost conflicting messages right here. The Hierophant in the Witch, the magic you seek is inside of you. Let it flow. Whereas the Hierophant certainly would not say that. He would say, I have the answers for you. So I feel like these, you know, if I drew these two cards, it would be kind of asking me to really think about where I think the answers to my question or my situation or whatever would actually lie. There's tangibility in Six of Swords. Oh my god, I just realized that I do have an eighth deck. Hold on. Try not to kick over the camera while I grab the other one. Not to be a dumb bitch, and I even said to myself, I gotta make sure I grab this other deck. <laughs> well, we all knew that was gonna happen, didn't we? I'm gonna pretend like it didn't. So I feel like these two decks... Let's zoom in here a little bit. I don't need to kick over my little tripod thing, but... I feel like these are going to go pretty well. These guys away. I colored the edges of this um, with like a metallic sharpie. I don't recommend doing that because it's kind of like it doesn't dry. Uh, it's, it's super weird. Okay, the deck that I forgot to grab, which was another one that I thought of. First thing. I'm just going to grab half of it out. This is my Memento Mori Oracle. And this deck is pretty specifically um, made for spirit work and communication. So, I kind of feel like there are similarities in the way that I plan on using this deck. Even though this deck is pretty cool toned and this one's much warmer with its sort of parchment parchmenty background. Like, here I am, uh, the Witch's Compass. This was one, uh, if you're part of, uh, the Black and the Moon Patreon, 
um, then every once in a while, um, she'll have a couple extra cards to get sent out to the, the people who are part of the Patreon. Um, and they don't have any specific meanings. So, like, the Witch's Compass and the Five of Wands, you know, here we've got someone blowing out candles with bellows. Um, it's generally just, you know, about a disaster of chaotic energies, right? And the Witch's Compass is saying, let's come back to center, let's think about which direction is what, and where we should actually be traveling. There's our Stang and the Star. So, while these decks don't necessarily look aesthetically similar, really, in any way, um, I just, it, something about the energy of the reading of these has a similarity. The moon wants offerings. The morning brooch and the hermit. Okay. After kicking over my thing, I guess that we have looked at that. All we're going to. This deck is so huge because I have, which way does this go in here? I have all of the um, expansion packs and shit. So this is the fucking, it's in a bag, but like, it's so fucking big. Oh, please ignore the cat hair. You know what? Pretend like that didn't happen. Okay, so those were my decks that I'm going to try pairing with it that I feel like just made sense. Um, next, we have the maybe ones. Um, I'll, I'll give them a try and see. So this is the Goddess's Knowledge cards. Um, I tend to not, like, draw a card to just do a reading with this deck. I might do, like... Um, to see about a, a goddess to work with. Okay, this is made of pre-existing art. It's kind of a fucking disaster because you'll see as I start flipping through it. This one is mass market. I don't remember. I might have gotten it at a metaphysical shop. Here we've got Aphrodite and the Six of Wands. Strength and Minerva. Oh, the wisdom to know what strength actually means. So we've got our Knight of Cups and Gaia. Um, okay, so on the backs of these cards, it, it's got a little bit of information on it, but it's not necessarily... I, I don't know how, like, mythologically accurate it is. Um, so when I draw a card from this uh, goddess's knowledge cards, um, I tend to just go ahead and, like, Google it and look up some shit about her. So I do feel oh, like this could be beneficial... It just for sort of almost in an undercurrent of energy underneath uh, cards that I'm drawing from the Somnian Tarot. Five of Swords. Earth Mother. A horrible devouring figure, yet also honored as a moving creative principle. Okay. I, I can see how these ideas can mesh. Um, the thing with this one is it's kind of going to make, it's going to require work just because I'm going to always have to look up this shit. Even the Empress. So we'll see. We'll see if I feel like doing this bullshit with this one. But I felt just, I don't know how to explain it. Looking at the photos of these cards and actually like having them in hand kind of is a different energy? I don't know how to explain it. Okay, put this shit away. All right, I've got one more. Jesus Christ, this tuck box is like, I don't know. This one is the Untamed Spirit Animal Oracle. This is another maybe deck that I kind of think might go with it 
mostly just because there are no animals pictured in the Somnia tarot. And I feel like for the most part, when I get tarot decks, there's usually like at least one animal. <laughs> so I think this is my first people only tarot deck. This King of Wands fucks me up. Like, I need to remember this for like imagining villains in books when I read them. <laughs> I have a coin, coins and the badger, determination and mental energy. So I do feel like these complement each other in a way, you know, adding a little of that animal energy into a an extremely people-y deck. Nobility and leadership of the gorilla with the queen of coins. the chariot and deer grace and kindness so i think this this maybe deck is going to probably work out better than that goddess knowledge card one that i grabbed but i figured it was worth looking at this also is not the only box this for this uh animal spirit oracle there's like this little tuck box inside this bigger box it's it's a fucking pain in the ass okay so now i am to my blasphemous <laughs> my blasphemous pairings so the first one of these is the ocean dreams oracle by danielle noel so okay before you're like what the fuck are you doing i want to say that i there are similarities i think jesus between these decks and the first one is they both have heavy water energy um this is very much a darker contemplative sort of feeling whereas this one's much lighter um it almost feels like an as above so below um and I, it's almost a balance um if if you separate things into you know masculine versus feminine sort of energies i this this is a very feminine deck this one has a masculine feel um there's dark and light they almost give uh, they're very much opposite right there's mother ocean and the queen of wands this fucking rose petal finish man magnetic heart in the queen of swords like i feel like it's sort of giving it's almost telling you things you need to balance right the queen of swords is often sort of seems to skew negative just because people like to be like oh she's got her sword unsheathed she's gonna say mean things and not think about your feelings um but this magnetic heart makes me think that it's probably about i i try and avoid the guidebook with with uh ocean dreams okay i just I don't know exactly what it says in there because the guidebook irritates me. So it's kind of, you know, balance these two things. The Ace of Swords and Celestial Waters. I feel like oh, the Nine of Swords and Unconditional Love. I feel like there's something in these decks. Like something about them is sort of drawing them toward each other. I'm not exactly sure what that is no rag rats over here god I, I feel like i need to take this card out because i can't stop with that fucked up tattoo thing <laughs> convergence in the ten of swords like both of these creators might literally shit their pants to see me being like i'm gonna bear these <laughs> okay the king of swords and deep mysteries that makes sense right i don't know something protection in the knight of coin something about these decks wants to talk to each other maybe they want to fight i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. ancient emissaries magician okay the ten of wands and inner sanctum like I, I don't know why there's something about this that i feel like is working or is going to you can stop at this moment <laughs> Okay, so that was my first uh, blasphemous pairing. 
the other one is similar. This is the Rose Oracle. Uh, it's by Rebecca Campbell. So it's another one that I don't read the guidebook for. Um, this artwork, uh, instead of being by Danielle Noel, is by Katie Louise. This one, actually, I thought of trying this pairing before um, the Ocean Dreams. And I was thinking about, I, I did a reading earlier today about like duality. Um, and I was just, I'm thinking about how these energies in these two decks are very different. And I feel like they have something, there's something to be gained from them, you know, being read together. Okay, this is the one card. I don't know why, but I get fucking Mr. Bean vibes from this one. And I this is the one card that like irritates me in this deck, which is just super I don't I can't stop thinking about it. Like that just looks like some Mr. Bean shit. This these this deck is very uh stark, you know, between the colors and it's there's just not that much going on in the background. Whereas this deck is very much, uh, you know, sort of a, a smushy, okay, not smushy, but like blended together feel. Um, and there is a lot of little details going on here. And something about it, I feel like works. Healing the mother line, oh shit, and the five of cups. Hmm. I don't know why I feel like this is a message for me. I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> the Eight of Swords and the Great Mother. We're doing the Deccan Walk uh, with Marlena and Teresa. I, I am doing it too. And the Eight of Swords right now is the card of the Deccan. And the whole video is talking about um, fate versus free will. And how you end up being stuck. And the Great Mother surrender to the mystery, like, that feels like fate? I don't know, man. Okay, I gotta stop. We'll just, I've only got a couple cards left in this deck. The Child Within Injustice. There's some good cards in here. Give me some good ones. Look at this one. Wish there was, like, a deck that was all this darker sort of stuff. Like, I really like this card. I like the... What's that other Great Mother card or whatever that I just had out? I want, like, an entire deck with, like, this feel. Yes, I did pre-order that uh, Shadow Edition of the Moonchild Tarot, so we'll see if that's what I'm looking for, but... Okay, so this was my final um, pairing idea that I have right now. I also colored the edges of this. Um, so yeah, if you've got the Somnia Tarot or you have another deck that you think might pair well with it, let me know. Um, these are just what I picked from what I have. Uh, like I said, I'll put uh, links to the indie decks um, in the description box. That will be the Somnia Tarot. That will be the Ocean Dreams Oracle that was by Danielle Noel. Um, that will be the Endless Oracle, and that will also be the or uh, Nocturna. Yeah, Nocturna Oracle. So, I don't remember if, what, if I finished what I was saying or if I interrupted myself, because I do that a lot. If you've got other pairing ideas, let me know in the comments, because I always want to know what other people think. Thanks for watching, bye.